All right, good morning, my love. So good to be here this morning. Mr. Charlie just wanted me to mention, if you don't have a couple of these sheets of paper with the new fellowship hall and the stuff, um, he can get you one. There's some on the front pew down here. Um, while I'm doing the announcements, even you can probably raise your hand and somebody will come around and kind of give you some. So if you don't have some, um, we got some on the front down here. Some of these guys. Anybody? Anybody got one? Yeah. I look pretty good. I think everybody's got one. All right, good. A couple of announcements this morning. We're going to do this quite quick this morning. Uh, we do have our Fellowship Hall uh, committee going to be doing a presentation this morning about the um, upcoming Fellowship Hall um, opportunity. We're going to have a question and answer this morning. Also going to have a question and answer session uh, Wednesday night. So, um, so if you so Wednesday night normal service after business meeting, going to have a question and answer session on this. If you want to take this home, look it over. Uh, they're going to have that. I'm sure they'll tell you about that in a few minutes. Just want to remind you of that. Um, children's camp is coming up. Um, June the 19th through the 21st. Uh, it's going to be called Kids on Mission. It's going to be a mission emphasis with the camp this year. We're super excited about it. Um, we want you to be a part of it. Uh, we want your kids to be a part of it. Neighbors, kids, if you know anybody that would be like to do this, please let us know. Get with myself or Miss Karen or Miss Patty. Uh, we need to know very soon. Um, also, we need shirt sizes and those kind of things very, very soon. So let us know if you're going to be a part of Kids Camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you can only come on Saturday, that's an option for you too. Um, just let us know. So we, so we can get you the information and what you need on that. Um, VBS, uh, the dates are in the bulletin this morning, July the 12th through the 15th, the Sunday through a Wednesday from 6 to 8. If you can help out with VBS, there's a sign-up sheet in the window. Please do that for us. Sign up so we can get those volunteers and uh, do that. And tonight um, at 5 o'clock, praise team and drama team. Ms. Patty was telling me um, drama team is from 4th grade to 12th grade and that she needs some guys to be a part of that. So if you can be a part of the drama team, uh, they're working on some stuff right now, actually. Um, practice last week. Be part of the drama team, come be part of the praise. And if you're if you're a guy, yeah, if you're too old to be a part of the drama team, come be a part of the praise team. That happens at five o'clock. <laughs> that happens at five o'clock. May perform next week. May perform. Okay. May perform next week, next Sunday morning. Don't forget, next Sunday morning is Mother's Day, and uh, keep that in the back of your mind as to you go through the week this week. I've um, got a couple of prayer requests before we get started. Please remember Don Garrett um, as he has some tests run this week and Miss Martha Wallace is in the hospital. Uh, Y'all keep them in your prayers, please. Let's back a word of prayer now. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning, God. We pray for these that are on our prayer list, God. We pray for the ones in our midst that are not feeling well even today. These that are not with us this morning, God, we pray for them. And God, we pray for this service. We pray that your will is done. Bottom line, God, no, nothing more, nothing less in the very center of your will this morning, God. We pray if, um, for, the, for the song service. We pray for the presentation. We pray for the preaching, God. We pray that you are the middle of our service today. God, we pray that we keep our selfish ambition and those kind of things out of the service. And God, that we will look unto you today. God, thank you again for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you again for the opportunity to worship you in this place. Thank you again for all the blessings that you've given us. And this morning, may we worship you truly, God. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Y'all stand and have a time of fellowship with us. Good morning, Mount Olive. Good to see everybody this morning in the Lord's house. I'm going to ask you if you would to grab a hold of one of those white hymnals there in front of you. Turn to number 12, Great is the Lord. We serve a great Lord this morning.
Yeah.
Let me ask the uh, Fellowship Hall building community to come be assembled in these chairs. Um, I'm just going to give you the order of service, then pray, and then I'm going to turn it over to Mark Ashcraft. So come on, Fellowship Hall building committee. You can get on the front stage and, and uh, find you a seat. Come on, Fellowship Hall building committee. Nobody's coming. Come on. This is now is the time for you to come. Mark, all your paperwork's over here, buddy. I see it. So, all right. Um, this, is, this is what we're going to do. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, and then Mark Ashcraft is going to give you all the information. He's going to explain what you have in your hands. We will have a runner here in a little bit with a microphone. If you have any questions after Mark is finished pertaining to the Fellowship Hall, we want to give you an opportunity to ask those. We also want to do that Wednesday night. You might say this morning, Preacher, we hadn't had enough time to take in all this information, and I agree with you. That's why we're going to give you a chance this morning, and we'll give you a chance Wednesday night. So you take these, these, these papers home, you, you think about them, you pray about them, you look at them, and then Wednesday night you can also come back and ask any question that you want to ask. We hope to answer most of your questions this morning uh, without them needing to be asked. But let me first, before I pray, let me thank everyone on the stage, William Plus, Mark Ashcraft. Uh, thank you so much for doing what you've done. I think Rhonda Lansdale is also on this committee, but she's out of pocket today. And uh, so I'd like to thank everybody who has helped with this committee. This committee was formed back in 2011, back in 2011. We've been dealing with this for about four years now, and uh, the time has come. And uh, so we're excited, we're excited, we're excited. Uh, but we don't want to do what's good uh, we want to do what's best, and so that's, what we're, that's why we're presenting all this. We want to do what's best. We want the Lord to bless in the best possible way. So let me pray, and then we'll turn it over to Mark. Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Uh, Lord, those of us who are on the stage right now, God, we, we put in a lot, of, a lot of hours in thinking, but Lord, we've not thought about everything. We put in a lot of hours of planning, but we've not planned everything. So, Lord, I pray that right now you'll speak to our hearts as, as, as we pass out information and that Mark comes to explain this information to us. Uh, Lord, I pray that, 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 that we will have the best plan. Lord, I pray that you will lead, guide, and direct. And I pray that your will be done to glorify the name of Jesus Christ right here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, Mark. this meeting could be just almost over because he used up everything I was going to say. Um, first of all, I do want to thank the committee. The committee has been right beside me and they have been the ones to help make all of these decisions. And I said, well, I'm not going to be a lot of help because I'm not real good at this kind of thing. I said, so y'all's decisions, I'll just be your spokesperson. And I said, I'll do the best I can with that. And that's what I plan on doing. Um, roughly, like Brother David said, roughly around four years ago, uh, we done a survey, we, we passed it out to you all, and you all decided at that point that there was two things that we really needed. First of all, we have outgrown, uh, it's a good problem, uh, but it is a problem. We've outgrown our fellowship hall. Um, also, you said that we need a youth department area. Well, uh, we formed a committee you're looking at right now. This committee right here has addressed both of those uh, problems. And um, all of the best information is going to be revealed to you. And if there's any questions, again, uh, today you can ask any questions you have. Um, and if you think of something later on, we, we made you these copies here uh, so you can take it home with you. You can study over it. You can pray over it. And anything that you may have a question about that you don't have an opportunity this morning, Wednesday night will be an opportunity to ask more questions. Now, the reason why we done that was to hopefully... When you come next Sunday, you'll be prepared to make a vote, yes or no. So by all means, keep up with this paperwork, take it home, study it, look over it, and, and pray about it, most of all. Um, I want to make a, a valid point here. Um, when we formed the committee, we all got this together and we decided that the need of the building was a big need, uh, but we wanted to make sure that this was not something we wanted. This was something we needed. And this was something that was under God's leadership, not under our own want. So it was a unanimous decision that this is going to be for the edification of building our church that God would lead us. And we did. So this has all been under God's leadership. And also that's where we come about the idea of holding until we got the $150,000 mark. Uh, that was to make ourselves ready and prepare ourselves for this financial debt. Uh, so in light of all that, uh, I just wanted you to know the foundation and the beginning of this building committee and where our hearts been the whole time. 
So it's been waiting on, on, on certain things. Now, I want to point out a couple of facts here, and we're going to have some pictures up here, which is going to show out the layout of the building in just a minute. But I want to, I want to tell you a few facts here. Um, this is facts from the Building Fellowship Hall Committee. After receiving bids from our contractors, uh, the committee is recommending that Mastercraft Builders Incorporated in Boonville, Mississippi do the job. Now, we've had four uh, um, um, quotes uh, from different contractors. Um, and we feel like after sifting through these that the best one for the job is going to be Mastercraft. Um, building a new fellowship hall and renovating the existing fellowship hall into a youth worship area with classrooms will cost somewhere around $350,000. Anybody that's ever built anything knows that that price can vary depending on you know, what happens between time. Um, now the youth department, I understand there's going to be some questions about youth department. We, as the committee, decided on the front end that this youth area would not be started. We would not plan it because that would take our focal uh, point away from the building of this fellowship hall. We did not want to detain that by thinking about two things at one time. So we're going to readdress the youth department after this fellowship hall is complete. So right now the plans are pending, therefore price will be pending. We have an estimate only. We do not have an exact figure on that. Uh, number three, the committee is recommending that the above mentioned contractor build the fellowship hall uh, and that the existing fellowship hall be renovated. Number four, after receiving quotes from the banks, uh, the committee is recommending Regions Bank in Tupelo, Mississippi for the loan. Uh, now also, this, this is the main branch. We can do our payments and whatever and do our business part of it from Baldwin, but the loan will be made through Regions of Tupelo. Uh, the bank will give the church a $200,000 loan and the loan interest will be 3.25%, and this is on a 15-year note. This is what the committee recommends. Um, the payments will be $1,405.34 a month. Uh, we currently have, uh, keep in mind, you all give us uh, the permission to wait until we gained $150,000 before we begin the building. Right now, we currently have $150,000 in our building fund. So think of how much money we've saved by generating that kind of money. Uh, the financial numbers for uh, when we built the sanctuary. Now, this right here is just food for thought. We just thought that it'd be good for you to have some kind of an idea, a starting point, or something to think about. Uh, before the sanctuary was built, uh, we had two CDs, um, which totaled uh, $310,989.10. We borrowed $400,000. Uh, we made a total of 77 payments of $3,187.48 for a total of $245,000. $435.96. We made principal payments of $192,848.52. Our final payment was on 11-22-2010, and it was for $12,434.50. Our total amount paid to First American was $449,918.98. We financed the borrowed amount for 15 years, that's 180 months. The loan plus interest totaled of $573,746.40. We paid it off early and we saved $123,827.42. Now we wanted you all to know that to see that this right here is not going to be a drop in the bucket. Um, after a little more figuring, which is not on here, but I want to go ahead and tell them this is roughly a million dollars you're sitting in right here. So this that we're looking for to build a fellowship hall is not a touch in the bucket. Um, the committee is recommending that the new fellowship hall be a 50 by 100 steel frame metal exterior building. The building will be 14 foot tall and it'll have 10 foot ceilings that'll be drop ceilings. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes. The committee feels that the new building fellowship hall will comfortably seat around 240. Now these figures right here, these are flexible. Roughly, um, I wasn't supposed to tell you this, but this building will seat roughly around 270. Um, but we're going to be able to try to generate more room in between the pathways and that type of thing. So roughly about 240 comfortably to give us plenty of flow space between uh, tables and, and chairs and that type of thing. The committee is recommending that the new fellowship hall be built between the gym and the educational facility. The main entrance to the new fellowship hall will be directly connected to the sanctuary by the hallway in front of the choir room. That's right through these two doors right here. Um, whenever, when the job is finished, if you all permit, 
you'll just go straight through these doors to another set of double doors that will open into the new fellowship hall for easy access. Uh, there will be two other entrances to the fellowship hall and from the new fellowship hall uh, to the doorway in the existing fellowship hall. That means over on the north west side there will be another door that's going to allow you to go up into the youth department remember that's going to be renovated into a youth department so you'll be able to go through that door and make your entrance to the youth department area um, let's see you'll have another door down on the north end uh, though, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes um, the committee is recommending that the tunnel be demolished and the playground be located I know Miss Barbara Blaylock is going to hate that but um, the, the tunnel will be gone, and, and there's a reason for that. We have looked into a lot of different possibilities around this uh, area uh, of the church. The best possible location is this area. First of all, the building and grounds and probably every other committee at Mount Olive has had nothing but complaints with that tunnel. That tunnel is a nuisance. Uh, it smells. It's dark. It's just you can't stop a leak from leaking in there when it rains. This space right here is absolutely not used except for that tunnel. So that is the very best place to use, uh, uh, utilize for our new building. The committee is recommending that the new fellowship hall's kitchen have industrial gauge, uh, gauge gas appliances. The committee is looking into both new and refurbished. Now the reason uh, we're looking at the possibility of refurbished is because this is gonna save the church half of what it would actually cost, probably more than double uh, if we were to go new. It's going to save us almost half that by using refurbished. And by the way, the refurbished is a warranted product. Uh, there's only one particular piece, and that is the fish fryer. The fish fryer we will purchase new. We've been recommended by the appliance people not to do a used one of those. Uh, so we will be seeking a new one of those. Um, the committee is recommending that number four rebar be used throughout the entire concrete slab. Uh, that'd be simple. Uh, because what we've done here, we've done it so this doesn't crack uh, in the future. Uh, you know how this Mississippi mud is. Uh, the foundation will hold together by using the four inch rebar. Um, it does drive the cost a little bit, but it's gonna pay off in the long run. Um, the committee is recommending that we have stained floor, uh, concrete floors. Uh, this is very low maintenance. Uh, there, there's no upkeep on it with the exception of the kitchen. The kitchen will have tile. Uh, we're, we're looking to have a tile and the type, the color, the size will be determined at a later date. Uh, the committee is recommending that the new fellowship hall have uh, both fluorescent and can lights. The can lights are exactly what you're looking at up here. Uh, maybe a different style, but it's going to be this type of lighting. Plus, it's going to have fluorescent in, in certain areas. So, before I go any further, now that I've said that, are there any questions? Um, just a second. Who, who did we designate to carry this microphone in case there's questions? Who did we get? We didn't, did we? Just wait till the end. Wait till the end? Okay. All right. No questions right now. Okay. All right. Connor, pull us up the first picture, and I'll try to see if I can make this clear as mud. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, good question. Um, first of all, before we get started, we, we, we know that the first thing um, to make a building hold up is a foundation. And in order to get a good solid foundation, you, first of all, you have to prep the groundwork. Uh, it's, it's our recommendation that we do a 36 inch dig out here. We're going, in other words, we're gonna dig down 36 inches and get rid of that top soil. Uh, by any of the contractors, uh, they've all recommended the same thing. Uh, no less than 30 inches, 36 being best. We're gonna dig that out and we're gonna put some good topsoil, in which case we've already checked the topsoil. Uh, we had, um, what's that? Dabs uh, out of Tupelo come down and they done a soil sample um, about the dirt that we're looking at putting in there and they said that it is the best. For doing what we're gonna do with it, it is the best. So we're gonna dig down 36 inches and we're gonna put 36 inches of the real good soil on top of it. That way it's gonna hold up our foundation. So anything else I need to add before I move on to the pictures? Okay, and we're gonna to get to questions here just in a little bit. Let me see if I can explain some of these pictures here. Okay, all right, this is, um, let me just stay close to the mic here. This, this is the north end of the building. Um, 
This building, there's only one change that did not get transferred to these new pictures. Um, this door right here is not going to be a single door. Uh, this is going to be a double glass door. Uh, we, we, we've changed it to a double glass door in case we need to put a large object to roll it through uh, to get it in and out. A small door is going to be almost impossible to do so. Uh, if we have something like appliances that need to make it into or back out of the kitchen. Uh, so these double doors right here is going to be very vital to the flow and the motion of the, the new fellowship hall. So that is the only thing that will be different than what's on this picture. Now these right here are glass windows. They are six foot tall and they're going to go across the whole end of the building. And the reason why the committee come up with this is because this is going to be more inviting uh, the uh, atmosphere. When you're in there having a fellowship hall, you can see the environment outside. Uh, it's just going to look more inviting while you're in there. It's going to be open. It's not going to be quite as claustrophobic as what we have in there now. Um, so we thought we'd let some natural lighting in and you could see what's going on outside at the same time. Also, you can see what's going on out there on the patio. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you about that. Right in this area out here, there's going to be a, a concrete patio that's going to come 20 foot off of the door area. Uh, so there's going to be like table and chair, um, picnic tables and that type thing out there in the front. So you can see what's going on out there. So, you know, when one of the kids is out there acting up, you can see them. So um, anyways, that, that's going to be there too. It's not on the picture, but it, it is uh, going to be there. Uh, this, like I say, this is the exterior wall of the north end of the building. Uh, this right here is going to be uh, 14 foot outside exterior walls, 14 feet. And then we're going to have right across there is our 10 foot drop ceilings. And by the way, these are going to be tinted glass. All that's going to be tinted and shatter resistant. Uh, so that, that's not going to be dangerous for our kids. Okay. Um, next picture, Connor. Okay, this right here is going to be uh, just an outline look of the south end of the building. This is the part right here where the choir room and the new building is going to join. Um, we initially started out with a 14, uh, 12 foot outside wall, but we had to change that due to the fact there was going to be a distance between the two buildings. So in order to make these two buildings join right over here where we talked about a while ago, we had to go up higher so it would cover that, uh, this existing choir room. So we had to go 14 foot. So this is just an outside of what that's going to look like. This being the new building and this is the building they're going to tie into. Okay, uh, next picture. Okay, this is just a, like a top view of the, um, uh, of the whole building structure. Uh, this being your eating area. This, and again, keep in mind, this is going to be a double door. Um, so that's going to be your double glass door. This is your windows. That's the north end of the building. This is going to be your 20-foot concrete area that we're going to be picnicking and uh, grill. Uh, hopefully later on we're going to have a grill out there as well. Um, this over here is going to be your kitchen area. Now right back here in the corner in between the two buildings, we're going to have a canopy. It's going to be an 8 by 10 canopy, and there's going to be a piece of concrete poured there. Now this is going to be for our cooks. Our cooks is going to use that whenever we have a fellowship time. If they need to cook on the grill or something, they're going to be in the uh, coverage of a uh, canopy. Uh, they won't get sunburned, and they can still cook in the rain. Um, I like to eat whether it's raining or not, so you know, I figure y'all do. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Um, we're getting our air conditioning units is going to be between the two buildings. This is the gym area over here. So right in here, we're going to get our air conditioner units, um, and this is pretty self-explanatory. There's, you know, three units that's going to go there. Um, also, on the location that we're having to do this, um, in order to con control water, on both sides of this building, there is going to be a French drain system uh, to make sure that water buildup is not going to be an issue. So that's also going to aid us in the digging down of the 36 inches. They're going to be able to utilize that for the drain off of water coming off of all of these roofs that's going to kind of come together. That's going to be a lot of water in there, so they're going to have to accommodate that and control it somehow. So the only way to do that is to do French drain. That's also in included in the cost. Um, okay, I think that's, that's a good enough on that one. Go to the next one, Connor. Okay, the kitchen area, I'll be honest with you, I've... I think I understand the kitchen a little bit, but not as good as some of the other ones. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's a couple of things that's a little different. Again, we've made a couple of changes that the guy that drew this up did not get. 
So let me tell you what the changes are. Num well, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. This, this right here is a um, shelving area. This is where we're going to put storage, um, our food, our canned goods. We're going to put a washer dryer, ice machine, uh, sink, like a mop sink. Uh, right now we currently don't have that. Um, so we're going to have a mop area in there that won't be in the kitchen area. Uh, some people think that's not sanitary, and it's probably not. So we're going to have a special sink in there for the mop area. But this right here is the one thing I want to point out. This is, that stands for water heater. We're not going to do a, a water heater with a tank. Uh, we're going to change that, and it's not going to affect the cost, but a little bit. Uh, but we think it's going to be worth it because all of you can probably remember over in the nursery area the, the problem that we've had for a long time smell because of stagnant water. Um, it doesn't get used enough to get that and to keep it in rotation. So the way to get rid of that is to don't have a tank. So we're going to put a uh, heater on demand type water system up there. Uh, so you can change that and also it's going to open up that floor space. Uh, all you'll have is just a unit that mounts to the wall. Uh, so that's going to help us in, in a couple of different ways. Um, let's see, let me think here, let me think. Uh, also something we don't have, which we will have then, is we've got food warmers. These are upright food warmers that, you know, they stand up. I'm sure all of you know what they are. But we don't have that right now. This is going to aid us in, in when we bring food in. A lot of times people bring in food um, that's already been cooked and it just needs to stay warm. We're going to have a place to put them now rather than sitting on the table and getting cold. That's, that's going to help out in that. Uh, we're going to have a closet area here for your broom and that type of stuff. Then we're going to have a refrigerator. And in the island here, there's one more thing. Uh, this is a stationary island. Um, also, that's not in the picture. We're planning on having like a stainless steel mobile island, uh, like a table, a work table or, you know, food uh, serving table or something like that. It'll be mobile. We can move it wherever we want to. And it's not on the picture, but that'll be uh, included in our um, equipment that we get for the kitchen. Let's see, uh, what else? Um, Is that the last picture, Connor? That's the fourth one. Okay. All right. I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, by the way, all of these uh, appliances will be industrial grade, um, and it'll be pending on you know what's what's available. Then we'll have to get with the the guy that sells it, and um, and yeah, we'll know a little bit more about it at that point. So that is all the pictures we have. You have uh, the information that we have now. This is the decision of your committee, and we're seeking your approval on this. Uh, we think that this is the best way we need to go. So now that you have seen the pictures, questions? On the uh, bank interest right there, what did farmers and merchants come in at, at, at interest? What was their interest rate? They came in the same thing. Same thing? Mm -hmm. Brother moderator, I move that we go with farmers and merchants bank because they're a locally owned and operated bank right here in Baldwin, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So if they got the same interest rate, I recommend we go with farmers and merchants bank. Could I, could I do this? Yes, ma'am. Stand up, Ms. Ms. Ellis. Ellis. Ms. Ellis. The reason we went with uh, regions when we got our, the first time we, in 11, I guess, 2011, they gave us the best interest rate. They gave us better than anybody else. So we felt like that they should get the first choice. And they are also in Baldwin, by the way. Well, no, no I, I disagree with that local now. Uh, they're not, they're locally owned in Baldwin, Farmers and Merchants is. The Regions Bank is not locally owned in Baldwin out there. So I, I move that we go to Regions Bank on this right here. Okay, we'll, we'll note this down and we'll have it taken back to the committee and we'll, we'll check in on this. Okay, any other questions?
Okay, good point, Jacob. Um, in the last uh, meeting that we had, we did consult with budget and finance on this. Be right with you, Mr. Curtis. Um, we did talk with the budget and finance, and we are they were unanimous, and we have 100% support of budget and finance on the decisions financially of this. So, just so you know, I didn't I, I didn't mention that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They were going to finance it for five years, and then in five years, they were going to redo it, and Balloon. our, our Balloon. payment would be, it would be tied to prime. But now, regions, it's straight across the board. It's, it's a fixed rate. Okay. 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 Uh, Ms. Helen said that uh, another reason why we went with regions was because whenever she spoke with farmers and merchants, farmers and merchants is on what they call, it's a balloon rate. I think it's reassessed every five years and then your price could float. It could go up, it could go down. So therefore, regions said, no, we'll lock it in flat across the table 15 years at a certain 3.25%. So that was another reason why we went with regions rather than farmers and merchants. I knew there was something else, I just couldn't remember what it was. Okay, Brother Curtis, I think you had a question. She covered it. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. That that question's been answered. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Next question. Any more questions? Where's it at? It's not in there now. <laughs> it's got the water. Yeah, okay. Also, Jacob picked out a fact that the we do have a freezer going in here as well. It's going to be beside the refrigerator, uh, but it didn't make it on the picture either. So, <laughs> all right. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will. Unfortunately, you will. Um, we're going to have to play with that by ear because that once we get the new youth department area opened up, it's going to open up also some use of the rooms that they're using now. So we'll have to move that stuff according to what opens up. So, but yes, you will lose that closet, unfortunately. <laughs> Any more questions? Going once. <laughs> Going twice. Okay, just keep in mind uh, you have information in front of you that you can take home with you and you study this and any questions that may come up, write it down and come back Wednesday night and we're going to do question and answer again and maybe we can get it resolved between now and Wednesday night and then we're hoping to get a yes or no vote by Sunday morning and by all means pray over this and ask God's in my hand. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you. Mark, you did a good job, buddy. Mark has been worried about this day for four years, but you did a good job, man. You sure did. So you write down anything you need and bring it to church Wednesday night. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We're not going to be in our regular Sunday morning study because I knew that this was going to take extra time. And so I'm going to give, I'm going to share a, a brief message with you entitled, Are You Committed? Are you committed is what we're thinking about this morning. Psalm 37, if you found your place, please stand with me as we read verses 3 through 5. The Bible says in those verses, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And he shall bring it to pass. Let's pray. Lord, we are thankful to be here this morning. We are thankful for the work that has gone into the presentation that was made today. I pray, Lord, that you will guide us as we think about the new fellowship hall and as we pray about your will. Lord, I pray that your will will be accomplished. I pray that you'll speak to our hearts now, Lord, not just about fellowship hall things, but about spiritual things. And Lord, I pray that the name of Christ will be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. As I've already mentioned, I want to preach to you a message this morning entitled, Are You Committed? Well, let me ask you something. Do you, do you chew gum very much? Uh, a few years ago, I, had, I was chewing a stick of gum, and, uh, and I, I hurt a tooth. I had to go to the dentist. I'm not fond of dentists. We were living up in Corinth at the time. And over the past 10 years, I've probably not chewed but about five pieces of gum. But how many of you in here are gum chewers? You like, raise your hand if you're many. Many of you are gum chewers. Now, I want you to think about this. What is your favorite type of gum? If I call out your favorite type of gum, I want you to just raise your hand. I'm just going to call out a few, a few types of gum. Do any of you like juicy fruit? We got any juicy? Okay, as a bunch of people like juicy fruit. What about Wrigley Spearmint? Does anybody like Wrigley Spearmint? All right, we've got several. What about Wrigley's Double Mint? We got any Double Mint ladies in here? Okay, I figured so. Now, what about this? Remember the remember Trident? You remember the Trident stuff? All right, all right. We got two more to go. What about Big Red? Anybody like Big Red? That's what I grew up chewing. And now here's the last one. If you're a guy, I want you to raise your hand if you've ever chewed some Big League Chew. Got any Big League Chewers? That's the good stuff right there. All right, now I want you to think about this. What kind of package does chewing gum come in? You can get a five-stick pack. You can get, uh, remember my grandmother used to get the double mint, the big old, the 20-stick packs. And now today, if you go down the, the candy aisle at a, at a grocery store, you can even find uh, packets of gum where there may be three or four 10 or 20 stick packets. You may buy 80 or 100 sticks of chewing gum all there at once. Now I want you to think about this, and this is small, but you've got to even decide in chewing gum how committed are you. Five sticks worth, 20 sticks worth, 80 sticks worth. How committed are you? This morning, we are all Mount Olivites. I remember the first time I was in a business meeting here at Mount Olive Baptist Church, and Curtis Greenhill came to the microphone and said, Good evening, Mount Olivites. And I thought, I like that. We are Mount Olivites. Every one of us here this morning are Mount Olivites. You may have been a Mount Olivite for a few decades, and you may have only been a Mount Olivite for a few days. But this morning, we are all Mount Olivites, and I want you to be committed. I want each group, the long-tenured Mount Olivites and the late-coming Mount Olivites, I want us to be committed. And today I'm going to be asking, are you committed to Mount Olive? Lord willing, next week we'll be back in our regular Sunday morning uh, study. But I want to share three things with you today about being committed. Number one, a committed person counts the cost. Now look with me in Luke chapter 14. In Luke chapter 14, beginning... With verse number 28, Jesus says, for which of you, and he's, he's sharing this, he went around everywhere he went, he taught and he preached, he helped. This makes sense then, and it will make sense now. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he's laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build, but was not able to finish. Jesus tells us in this passage um, that, that, that we, must, we must count the cost. If you were to go back and re read the few verses preceding that passage, you would see that he's been talking about bearing his cross. And he has been talking about the difficulty that each person faces when they decide to commit their way to the Lord. And so it goes from cross-bearing right to counts, uh, right, right to cost counting. And I believe he tells us as Christians, count the cost of Christianity. 
in today in today's world in our country right here in Mississippi we don't face a lot of persecution whenever a person is saved if someone says I'm a believer in the Lord the people you work with won't look down their noses at you most likely but in some areas persecution is heavy and he speaks to them about heavy persecution count the cost even of Christianity and I believe Christ teaches throughout uh, throughout the Gospels that it is worth it anything you face uh, adversarially because of your Christianity is worth it the Lord takes care of it but this passage I think also speaks to us this morning as a church I believe as a church he wants us to be responsible he wants us to count the cost and what we have presented is our best uh, attempt to count the cost of what you want us to do in the best way that we think it can be done. The question before you build anything should always be, is it needed? The answer is yes. I remember on the Saturday night before trial Sunday sermon back in, uh, back in 2010 before I came here, we were in the fellowship hall that night as a meet and greet with the pastor search committee and anybody else who wanted to come and meet me and April and, and Taylor. And we were there and it was packed out. We've not been able to have a Harvest Day celebration in the Fellowship Hall the whole time I've been here. Now, we can't even have some Sunday night socials in there because there are too many people for too few room. And so what we need is a new Fellowship Hall. But here's the question, is it needed and are you committed to, to seeing this thing through? Will it glorify the Lord and will you allow what you can do to glorify the Lord through building a new building? Number two, a committed person brings an offering. Let's look in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, this is the chapter of faith. The Bible says in verse number four, it talks about Abel and it says, by faith, Abel Offer to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain is his brother. Cain eventually killed him. You know all of that. But it says about Abel, he obtained a witness that he was righteous. And God testifying of his gifts and through it, he being dead still speaks. What it says about Abel's offering is that his offering lived on after him. Abel brought an offering to God and God noted that he was a righteous person. God noted that he was a righteous man. God noticed what Abel did, and then after his death, what he had done lived on. What he had done spoke of his righteousness. I think we can say that about all of our buildings. If you were here whenever the building was built back in 1925, you could probably say that about that. If you were here when the building was built in 1969, you could say that. If you were here when the parsonage was built in 1965 or remodeled in 2010 or added on to in 1980, I think you could say that about that then. If you were here when the educational facilities were built, you could say that about those who gave then. They give sacrificially, and what they gave lived on. If you were here just 10 years ago, as in 2005, this building was completed, and you're able to move in, and oh, the beauty of this building, and still churches are coming to our church when they want to remodel or build a new sanctuary to see what we've done and to see what we have. Whenever you first moved in here, people probably said, I helped pay for this. And I'll guarantee you, some of those who help give, some of those who help build, some of those who sacrifice have now passed away. In 10 years, we've had many deaths in our church family, but you will think about those who gave even after their death. Offering is above the tithe. We are asking you to continue to give the way you've been giving. That's what our budget and finance committee operates on. That's what our budget and finance sets up for the next year, what you continually give. But what we're wondering is do you want a new fellowship, bad, fellowship hall bad enough to be committed to bring an offering uh, above and beyond the tithe? Will you give so that we can afford it and so that we can build it? It is about sacrifice. A committed person brings an offering. Number three, a committed person will see God's blessing. Now let's look back here in Psalm 37, verses 3 through 5. It says, trust in the Lord. We have been trusting in the Lord, and we're asking you to do the same. And do good. Dwell in the land. Feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. I think we can truly say this is the desire of our heart. In verse 5, it says, commit your way to the Lord. 
Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Right there, verse number 5. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. He shall bring it to pass. The thing that you're going through, he will bring that to pass. We want to obtain what God has given us. We want to obtain what God has given for us, given to us, has in plan, has in store for us. We know he is faithful. We are asking this morning, will you be faithful? Will you be committed? Our church has a desire, but we must seek him to make sure that we are following God's will. And if we are committed to following his will, then we will be found in his blessings. If we will continue to follow him, he will continue to bless us. We must commit. And so this morning, in closing, I want to ask, are you committed to Mount Olive? Are you committed to Mount Olive? This next week, as you take home what we have, and we have extra copies down on the, on the front pew, as you take that home and you look at it, and you think about that dollar amount, and you think about that monthly ob obligation, are you committed? Maybe this morning, the invitation will be, are you committed to the Lord? Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you've never committed your way to Him. Maybe you're wanting to do things your own way and live your own life and play by your own rules and not the Lord's. Commit your way to Him. Maybe this morning the invitation would be to a family, has God led you to this church? And are you going to be committed right here? If so, go ahead and make it official, make it public, and let the Lord bless you for committing to Mount Olive. So let's pray as our musicians and spiritual encouragers come. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you now thanking you for this day and for this process and for this passage. Lord, I pray that we'll be committed. I pray, oh Lord, that you will, that you will be honored and that you will be glorified. And Lord, maybe even on, on this day when we've shared about a fellowship hall being built, Lord, maybe you will stir in the hearts of a person or in the hearts of a family. Lord, I pray that you will bless. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand. Number 330. <clears throat> so excited but everybody that's down through here we're going to be taking about three or four votes so let me i'm going to i'm going to, I'm going to explain everything as i go we have nathan and Allie ashmore right here we have nathan and nathan and Allie. i'm going to stand right here between them nathan and Allie have a little boy brody who is in the nursery he's in the nursery right he's in the nursery back there we think and uh they've been they've been coming to our church now for a little over a year uh, nathan 
and my mother worked together. They worked together for several years up at Corinth and uh, in Cat- at Caterpillar and Boonville and Corinth. Anyway, and, um, and so Nathan has been visiting for a while, and he and Allie, and so the Lord has been moving on their heart. And I've been talking with them about that, and so I'm excited that uh, Nathan's going to be making, making public the, what the Lord's been doing. Nathan's one of my visiting buddies. We've been visiting several, several, several times together. It is rare that you have someone come into a church before they even join and say, Preacher, can I go make some business with you? And uh, that's rare. And uh, that's what every one of you ought to be doing. And, uh, and I appreciate I appreciate his friendship, and I appreciate his desire to help reach this community for the Lord. And Nathan wants to move his membership from Ingram Baptist Church, and then Allie wants to move her membership from Bethel Baptist Church. It's a very Union County, right? Y'all okay with receiving a Union County girl? Is that all right? <laughs> but anyway, so Ingram and Bethel. I told them the guys are really going to bless their memberships being together as a married as a married couple. So man, I'm excited about years, uh, the years to come for the Ashmore family to serve right here with us. So do I have a motion and a second that we send for the Ashmore's letters? Motion, uh, 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 who are you? Mark, and then second by Robbie. I'm going to let Fred get the next part. Motion by Mark, second by Robbie. All in favor say amen. 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 Any opposition by like sign, and of course there is none. You guys hang out right here, and then we're going we're gonna to have a, have a, have a right hand of fellowship extended in just a little bit. All right, now the Johnson family has been coming for several weeks now. Uh, Sunday morning, even coming on Wednesday night, man, it's good. The girls are good ball players up there in the gym, so things are things are things are really good. Let me, let me we're going, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to present these in a little, in phases, okay? Tim, Tim, Tim Johnson is wants to move his membership from Dumas Baptist Church. Is that right here, Tim. Hunter wants to move his membership from Dumas Baptist Church. Sarah Kate. Wants to move her membership from Dumas Baptist Church. So I'm looking for a motion and a second that we send to Dumas for their letter. Motion by Fred Green, second by Billy R. Roberts. All in favor say amen. 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 Any opposition by like, sign, and of course there is none. So we will send to Dumas Baptist Church for their letter. Jennifer wants to unite with Mount Olive on forthcoming baptism to identify with our doctrine. She's coming from a different denomination. And then also, Haley, I'm making sure, yeah, I got Haley right here. Haley is wanting to unite with our church on forthcoming baptism to identify with our doctrine. She's coming from a different denomination also. And do I have a motion and a second that we accept them? A motion, Fred Green, second, Robbie Kimbrew. All in favor say amen. 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 Any opposition, by like sign, and of course there is none. And then also, let me come down here with Kelsey. Kelsey was recently saved, just actually a couple weeks before they started coming to church here. Tim's dad is one of my pastor friends. He pastors the Baptist Church in Tupelo. They live over toward Dumas and can't quite get all the way to Tupelo. They just stop halfway right here at Mount Olive. And so, so Tim's, Tim's dad spoke with these two just a few weeks back and shared with them about the salvation of the Lord. And Kelsey was saved and is looking to unite with their church on forthcoming baptism, profession of faith. Cooper was saved and is looking to unite with their church on forthcoming baptism, profession of faith. So do I have a motion and a second? Motion, Fred Green, second, Mark Ashcraft. Uh, everybody in favor say amen. 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 Any opposition but likes, and of course there is none. And so this doesn't happen a whole lot, y'all. I think if I counted it right, I went to Casu, if I think there, is there nine people up here? Mm-hmm. Is there nine? That doesn't happen very often. I told my wife to make sure she makes pictures. But anyway, so we're so glad to have these families, the Johnson family and the Ashmore family, we're glad that all of these have joined us. After the amen is said, I want you to come through and I want you to extend to them right invitation. And if anybody wants to take y'all out to eat for supper or for lunch, that'd be okay, right? That'd be just fine. So y'all can fight over who takes who out. So, And it has been a good day. Mark Ashcraft, thank you so much for presenting the material. You take him at his word. You call me. You call Mark anytime. Larry Blaylock has been as involved in this situation as anybody has been. You call me, Larry, Mark. You call anybody on the committee. We'll try to help you. And Wednesday night, we will entertain any questions. Guys, I'm glad that all of y'all joined. I'm glad that y'all joined. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Let me ask Wiley Noah to dismiss us with prayer. <laughs>